Welcome to the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm here with Bobby Newton. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. So you have an incredibly uh, rich history in as a musician here in Berks County. Yes. And maybe even beyond. I don't really know too much about your history, but I guess we'll learn about it. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started? Well, actually, I got started in church. Hmm. Uh, church called St. John Baptist Church down on the south side of Reading. Mm -hmm. uh, I sang in a spiritual group called the Crowns of Israel. Wow. And uh, it was like uh, five other guys and we sang all a cappella. Mm. And we would go around to different churches on Sundays and do spiritual programs. I uh, had the opportunity to perform at the Met in Philadelphia, mm. Broad and Poplar Street. Uh, with such notables as uh, Sam Cooke with the Soul Stirs, the Five Blind Boys of Alabama, hmm. Swan Nightingales, Dixie Hummingbirds, uh, Swan Silvertones, and a host of others. Hmm. And that stage is very, very large. It looks like uh, you could roller skate there so big. Hmm. Yeah, it's down in Philadelphia. I don't think they have that anymore. Yes. <laughs> So that's where you, where you got your start. Um, yes. mm -hmm. You've played all around Berks County. Have you played outside of Berks County as well? You've traveled quite a bit. And I've played been... throughout the United States mm. and abroad. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where abroad have you played? Well, I played in uh, Aruba, San Juan, Puerto Rico, mm. uh, Montreal, Canada, and uh, Nova Scotia. Mm. Plus, I played a lot of... Uh, Army and Navy Air Force installations throughout the United States, uh, from Andrews Air Force Air Force Base, where the president takes off a lot. Uh, as far as Minot, North Dakota, out that way, mm -hmm. uh, the New London uh, Groton submarine uh, submarine base in mm -hmm. Connecticut, uh, Fort Griffith Air Force Air Force Base, uh, uh, Fort Dix, mm -hmm. New London, Connecticut. Um, Quite a few throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You also played here in Reading. Oh yeah, I played here a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sam was telling us, Sam Tellerico, we just interviewed him and he was telling us about a club on the south side of Reading that he played at quite a bit. Um, Stew's Cave? I, no, that wasn't the name of it. I can't, now the, the name of it is... Uh, the Grand Hotel? The Grand Hotel. <laughs> that's what it was. Oh, that's a very, that's a very notable place. Uh-huh. <laughs> a lot of music. Did you play there? there? Oh, yes. I played there a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you have any stories from when you played there? Well, there were a few, you know. The, I played there a couple of times and their fights broke out. Mm. They were throwing beer bottles and uh -huh. stuff. Luckily, I, they never threw one up on the stage, but <laughs> which was great. But uh, I enjoyed playing there because the people were so in tune to what the music was about and they were having a great time but mm -hmm. every now and then you get a bad egg that would come in mm -hmm. and throw a bottle or argue about something you know mm. but most of the time when this incident would occur uh, the ownership they would tell you don't stop playing keep playing because that you know keep the people's mind people, what's, yeah, going, uh -huh. what's going on yes hmm. <laughs> How did you transition from um, singing in church to, to kind of your musical career? Well, if you really go back and check the history, uh, most musicians, especially a lot of black musicians, did start in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, like Wilson Pickett or Sam Cooke and James Brown, a lot of them, Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. they all started in church mm -hmm. initially. But... Um, then I crossed over to sing, and I used to go to a club in Reading called the Melody Bar. And uh, hmm. uh, one particular evening, I asked the musician, could I sit in with the band? And I sat in with the band. And the name of the group is called King Twig. And uh, I sat in with the band, and they really, really appreciated me. And about a week later, they gave me a call and asked me I wanted to join the band. And that was the first band that I ever hmm. actually joined. Mm -hmm. King Tweed, yes. What kind of music did they? Were you playing then? Well, they were playing rock and roll. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a guy in the band called P.T. at the time. It was called Mr. Party Time, <laughs> and he he was a very good dancer. He sang well, and 
did a lot of jumping around on the stage, you know, so sure. I, knew, I had a tough act to follow. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. What instrument do you play? Well, I play a little flute and mm -hmm. alto saxophone. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. I'm sort of self-taught with the instruments, but... Uh, mm -hmm. When did you start playing saxophone? Uh, I started playing like uh, 19... 1992, somewhere mm. around there, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, self-taught. Mm -hmm. I'm not the greatest saxophonist, but I can hold mm -hmm. my own. Mm -hmm. So singing really is your your forte, um, your forte there. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, groups influenced your music? Uh, like I said, Sam Cooke, mm -hmm. uh, James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding, the Delphonics. Um, the uh, the uh, shy lights, a lot of different bands like that. Mm -hmm. The Delphonics, yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't limit myself to just one style of music. I like all kinds of music. You know, like uh, I even like opera. Mm. Uh, uh, I don't sing, or I never did try to sing hard rock. Mm -hmm. I don't dislike it. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I like all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. What was that guy's name from Italy that used to sing and big robust guy sang opera? Is it Segovia? Segovia? Well, he had this big booming operatic voice, which I really, really adore. He was really fantastic. He was really big and he hit them high notes, huh. you know, tenor. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about how your career kind of transitioned over the years? Well, uh, uh, one time there was a guy in Reading that had a band. I forget his name off, off the top of my head. He had a great band, and one day I saw him, and he said, uh, Bobby said, there's a... Uh, a person down in Philadelphia they're looking for someone to sing uh, this song called There's an Island and I recommend your name and I'll give you the number. So uh, uh, I called this person up and uh, they told me to come down like, for an audition and uh, I went down there, I was at the Sigma Studios in Philadelphia which recorded a lot of top flight artists and I auditioned for the song and they uh, right away they accepted me to do it, which I did record on Atlantic Records. Mm. Uh, the name of the song was called There's an Island. Uh, it did quite well in a few parts of the country. But at the time that I was uh, signed with Atlantic, they were doing a shuffle with a lot of uh, other musicians. At the time, Aretha Franklin was there and Wilson Pickett was there. And there were some of their main artists that were really doing well. So I came in like, under the cover of that situation, and like I said, it was changing a lot of the uh, the uh, the uh, pr promotional people. Mm. So when my record mm -hmm. came out, it didn't get the full fledged promotion that it mm -hmm. should have gotten. Mm -hmm. But they were going to release it in England because at that particular time, uh, reggae's it, it was really popular, and that was the name of the song. It was mm. called. There's an island, but it was a reggae, hmm. and that was real popular in England. They said they were going to release it there, but somehow it got lost in the shuffle. Uh. Then shortly after that, I uh, I had a couple more records with them, and uh, I recorded for uh, Jesse James, hmm. who had uh, two artists that were really prominent. He had the fantastic Johnny C, who had a hit called Boogaloo Down Broadway. Then he had uh, Cliff Nobles who made the song called The Horse that was popular. I recorded a couple uh, records on his label. And shortly after that, I went with Mercury Records. Mm. And I recorded for them a song called Do the Whip, which I appeared on a TV show with uh, mm. uh, High Lit a couple mm. times and also on uh, Georgie Woods TV show in Philadelphia and uh, I, I uh, performed on a show, I forget the name of it, I think it was called Too Young in Ohio along with uh, Stevie Wonder, we were on the show at the same time which was really nice. I got a chance to meet him and 
and then I performed in Montreal on a TV show, and uh, I performed at uh, the Kyle Auditorium in uh, Connecticut, in uh, Richmond, Virginia, with Stevie Wonder and uh, a few other artists. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been around the horn a bit. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it. Yes. Do you have a favorite memory that just stands out that was maybe... A favorite memory? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. All of them are really good. And mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the, the one memorable one is like I said, when we were at the Grand and people came up and they were throwing bombs. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember that very vividly, yes. Uh-huh. What was... Um, what was it like playing in Reading? Um, well, at that particular time when I was playing and uh, other musicians, it was really a lot of fun. We played mm -hmm. at the Stew's Keg, the Melody Bar, a place on Cherry Street called uh, uh, Shucks. Uh, we used to play the Melody Bar from 9.20 to 2 in the morning and we'd play on Cherry Street at this club from 2 to 6 in the morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to have a lot of people coming in there that used to play cards down in the basement. Uh -huh. yeah. It was nice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to watch the sun come, come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, all, yeah, and also on 4th Street, we used to play there, a place called the Fifth Ward. The mm. music would start there like around um, 12, 12.30 at night mm. and go till daylight with people coming out of the club, the sun would be coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've recorded some of your music over oh, the yes. years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you work with any of the recording studios in locally in Reading or? Uh, yeah, I did some stuff at the uh, uh, gentleman's studio. He didn't have a name. It was called. Uh, his name was uh, uh, Wes Fisher. Hmm. Short and long. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I did an ID for the station in Pottstown for Shorty Long uh, when he was broadcasting there on uh, WPAZ. Mm -hmm. So I, I did went down there and I did a an ID for the station. You know, hmm. you, know what, you know what that is. I right? don't know what that is. <laughs> well, it's uh, you know, like when you listen to the radio and then someone comes on and say you're listening to so and so, oh, <coughs> uh -huh. but then they wanted me to, to like sing it. You know. <coughs> It was something like, uh, <clears throat> you never heard it so good as you do on WPAZ. Wow. They would play that, you know, like for ID, station mm -hmm. identification. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of work with Shorty Long you know, when he had his ranch down there on 422. Hmm. I used to go down there at the park and see the... Uh, different performers, the country and western singers. Hmm. And basically that's how I really learned how to yodel. I learned how to yodel by going down to the Santa Fe Ranch and watching Shorty Long and Dolly Dimples performing down there. Interesting. So I said, I'm going to learn how to do that. So when I perform now, I do it in my show. Uh huh. And uh, uh, I really get the people off guard because I, I tell them I'm going to uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do something now that I'm the only black man in the world, that, <laughs> in the States, that can do this. And, and I said, uh, what I'm about to do took me a lot of time and years to, to perfect. I said, I'm going to yodel for you. And they said, oh. Okay. <laughs> so I would say, well, listen, uh, in the event that I don't do it well, I like to get my applause up front. So they were all clap, give me a big hand. <laughs> so... Uh, we did it to the song I Ring the Night. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. I Ring the Night. So uh, <clears throat> I would sing like the first verse and then I'd get them to sing. And uh, then I said, okay, I'm going to do it now. So come around for me to yodel. I would start to yodel, but I'd make a big blunder like I made it. I couldn't do it. And they said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I need a drink. So I go to the table and I get a drink of water or something. And I said, okay, now I'm going to do it. And then uh, I would I would do it then. And they would give me like a standing ovation. <laughs> yeah, would, it, I do that quite a bit in my shows. Uh, that's pretty fun. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Huh. 
Yodeling. Do you think you yodel for us right now? <laughs> Not too good. It's too early. <laughs> <laughs> a little early yeah, in the morning early, for, a, yeah. for a yodel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got to warm up for that probably. <laughs> you know, it's hard singing when you first get out of bed, mm. you know. Mm hmm. Because uh, musician, we live backwards. We are up all night and sleep most of the day. Sure. Bed, you know. Sure. Yeah. You're still performing today. Is that our, you know, currently? Is that? Is oh that yes, you? yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I play in the area and out of the area. I play mm -hmm. uh, the Beverly Hills Tavern quite oh, a bit. Oh, uh, neat. Uh, Chef Allen's. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to be perform performing there on the third of November. Hmm. And I do weddings and private parties and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, carnivals and uh, divorces. We do them sometimes too. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes a man and a woman, when they're happy to check little, the other one out. A little divorce so. party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do those occasionally. That's mm -hmm. pretty neat. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Hmm. Uh, the one thing I enjoyed about. Uh, actually playing music is the traveling, you know, you get a chance to travel a lot and you meet people of all cultures and the things you learn by being a musician and traveling throughout the country in different places, you learn a lot of things that you would never learn in a book mm. or in school. You know? mm -hmm. People have different uh, uh, cultures as far as food, the way they talk. And mm -hmm. I love playing in Montreal. I learned to speak a little French up there, hmm. which in Paris they don't call that real French. It was sure. what Canadians speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but they always teach you the, the worst things when you're trying to learn a language. They teach you the bad words, you know, mm. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, like the song that Patti LaBelle recorded, "Voulez-vous mm coucher -hmm. avec moi ce soir?" That's that's a, a French saying, and that. Particular saying is, "Can I go to bed with you?" Mm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's in French. But I, I really like the way the people talk in Boston. Mm. You know, we go in a restaurant. They say, they used to order coffee. You say, "Could I have a cup of coffee?" You want you want a cup of coffee? How would you like it? Would you like it with sugar or would you, would you like it dark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they pack the car and have it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really love the traveling around the various uh, cities and people with different way they talk and the way they yeah, carry themselves. Yeah. But Boston was really funny. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was playing in Boston one time and uh, I don't recall exactly what year it was, but uh, we were back at the hotel and every light in the city went out. Hmm. Like it was a bomb situation. but. Hmm. Something happened to the grid, I guess, and we had no lights and no kind of electricity for hours all night, and everybody was scared. <laughs> I bet, yeah. Yes. Yeah, huh. I remember that real vividly. Mm -hmm. hmm. And there were times we would travel on the road, you know, oh, I'm sure all musicians can attest to this. You're driving and you're going to a gig and... Um, you run into bad weather, snow and stuff like that. And you, mm -hmm. A lot of times we just got to the job just in time to set up the equipment and start to play because of the weather or traffic accident or mm. you parked in a lot of the cars and stuff and can't move. Those are the things that a lot of musicians go through. But when you get on stage, your audience, they don't want to hear that. They just want to hear you play and sing. What are you going to do? Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's been many times I've been on stage, and I'm sure a lot of other musicians can attest to this also, that you going on stage and you, you entertain when you had a problem. You may have had a death in your family, mm -hmm. or, but you mm -hmm. st go, still go on. You know, you mm -hmm. abide by that situation. The, the, the show must go on. Sure. You still do it. Under mm. all types of circumstances. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I love it. I love making people happy and making people smile, just like you're smiling now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's smiling too. <laughs> Very good. The life of an entertainer. Yes. Mm. Mm. Is that was that your main career as a was a musician no, and I've, an entertainer? I've, no, I've done all kinds of work. I've worked at the Reading Hospital as an orderly years ago. I worked at mm. the, uh, steel mills. Mm. I worked at Dana Corporation as a welder. 
Uh, I worked at the Crystal Restaurant when it was open as oh. a cook. Uh-huh. I worked at the Abraham Lincoln as okay. a cook. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm very good in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm making a lot of women run away from me because I cook so good. <laughs> I can burn, yeah. Yes, indeed. Why does that make them run? You don't think that, I think that would make them stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it make them run because they can't compete, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I taught a lot of ladies how to cook, you know, good food. Yeah. Because you know, I like to eat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. The only thing I can't cook is Polish food, but I like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some good Polish food in the city. Oh, yeah. You can get I like Chinese mm -hmm. food, too. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't put too much of that MSG in it. I went to one restaurant, I won't mention the name, but I went there one day and they put so much of that stuff in the food. When I got out of there and got home, I could not stay awake. I was somebody, like somebody drugged me. <laughs> I hit the bed and I was out for hours. <laughs> I said, I'm not going back to that place again. Mm -mm. I won't mention that name because I don't want to give them bad publicity. Mm -hmm. but you know who you are. <laughs> yes, indeed. So when I go now and say, uh, no MSG, MSG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice for somebody that's looking to become a musician or looking to um, start a career in, uh, in music? Well, the only thing I can say is that you have to be dedicated and there's a lot of work involved. You got to practice a lot and you just really got to stay focused on what you're trying to do and if you want to be competitive you got to try to be competitive with your other people mm. that are performing mm -hmm. so that you can work alongside of them or with them or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it's not an easy task to be in show business it's quite hard you mm. know? Like I say, you, you have a lot of problems when you're going to different gigs and you have a lot of problems or sometimes when you get finished a job, you might not get paid mm. because of certain situations and a lot of things happen. You mm -hmm. know. But <clears throat> I would advise a person just to be dedicated, practice. If it's an instrument, you practice that because an instrument won't play by itself. You can buy an instrument, it can be beautiful and sit in the corner, it'll just sit there and look at you. You gotta pick it up and practice and play it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more you practice, the more you play it, the better off you'll be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you practice a lot? Yeah, but like about twice a week. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, with, with, with my band, we practice about twice a week. And I have mm -hmm. some very good musicians in my group. I have uh, uh, George Williams, who's a very, mm. very fabulous guitarist. I have. Uh, the drums is Frankie Love from Philadelphia. He's a very good drummer. And I have a very good bass player by the name of Rodney, but we call him Chili. He performed with uh, the Platters for a few years. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. The group that did uh, Only You. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my group. And uh, they're all good musicians. It's just the four of us, like the Beatles, but we, we make good music because we play as a unit. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter how many musicians you have in your band. It's what they make, play collectively together. You mm -hmm. can have a big band if they're all, all going in different directions. You don't have nothing. Sure. But if you have two, three, or four, if they're playing in unison, mm -hmm. the band is tight. Mm -hmm. Look at the Beatles. They only had four, and they they took over the world momentarily. Mm -hmm. Four guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much, Bobby, for sharing all of your wisdom and your experience with well, us. I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate this thousand dollars you gave me today. <laughs> thank you so much. That's going to make a lot of other people mad. I'm only joking. <laughs> well, uh, that's all we have for today, and we really appreciate you coming in. Well, I enjoyed every minute And you can probably it. see Bobby playing around town, right? You're still still he, playing around, right? Yes, we'll be, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, at Chef Allen's on the 3rd of November from 7.30 to 10.30. Great. They have great food there. People like to eat. Come on by and say hello. You're invited, too. I'll buy your first drink. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>